Right, today I'm making um, some profiteroles. For the first stage of making the profiteroles pastry, like um, shoe pastry, so you can use it for profiteroles, small ones, shoe buns or eclairs. Um, I'm just melting some water, butter, pinch of salt and a small amount of sugar, caster sugar. The butter has melted. Now you turn up the heat a little bit, add some flour. The idea is to stir vigorously until this fur forms into a um, ball and starts coming off the sides of the pan. So give it a good stir. See, it's starting to form into a ball. Really doesn't take that long. At this stage, I'll turn the heat down before the side bits start burning. So that's it. This is all I need for the shoe pastry. Turn the heat off. Now I'm going to let this cool for 10 to 15 minutes before adding some already beaten eggs and mixing with electric whisk. So while the um, shoe dough is cooling for another 10 minutes before I can add eggs to it and start piping it to bake um, the profiteroles, here I'm going to heat up some cream. Um, I'm making chocolate ganache, milk chocolate ganache, and this will be my um, sauce. You can make um, proper chocolate sauce, but I quite like the creaminess of chocolate ganache. And also I'll have to whip up some cream um, to fill the profiteroles. So for the chocolate ganache, um, I'm heating up 100 millilitres of double cream. Just as it starts to sort of bubble up and boil, I'm going to add 150 grams of milk chocolate. So, I, my, as you can see, the double cream is sort of uh, starting to boil, so it's... Um, yeah, it's definitely boiling. It's hot enough to add the chocolate. At this stage, I can turn the heat right down. Add the milk chocolate. You can do um, white chocolate ganache or dark chocolate ganache. They're slightly different ratios, um, cream to chocolate. Because my cream is hot enough, I'm going to turn, it, turn the heat off completely and just stir this until it becomes a um, smooth sort of consistency. Chocolate's melting. I'm doing the milk chocolate ganache because um, dark chocolate one can be quite strong just to pour on the profiteroles. You can do half mix, um, half milk, half dark chocolate. Um, so what I'll do when this is ready is just set it aside. You can refrigerate it and then heat up as you need or use straight away. So it looks quite dark, but it's definitely milk chocolate. It's, um, if I was to do a different ratio, more chocolate to cream, melt it, just as it's cooled down, you can start making truffles with it. So it's really a simple way. Or you can replace some of the cream, add Baileys. Replace some of the cream, add um, chocolate orange, mint, anything like that. That's it, so chocolate ganache is ready. I made it quite runny purposefully because I want to use it as sauce but for the profiteroles. Now I'm just going to check my profiterole dough and see if that's ready to add the eggs to. Right, I'm preheating the oven to 200 because um, it needs to be quite hot when the profiteroles originally go in. I have some beaten egg and my profiterole dough that's still warm but um, cooled down enough not to scramble the eggs as I pour them in. Now I need to pour the eggs in gradually, mix a bit and keep pouring the mixture in case I don't need all of it. Keep pouring the mixture until I get the right consistency. So here we go. Let's start with half of the mixture. <laughs>
Right, so you're trying to achieve um, soft dropping consistency. So when you, it sort of drops off the spoon. It's not very runny, but it drops off the spoon still. And the mixture's quite soft. Now you need to transfer this into a piping bag um, and get ready to pipe. Right, so I have my mixture in the piping bag and I'm going to cut the top of the piping bag off. As you can see, I'm not really bothering with um, piping nozzles. You can have one of those um, tube piping nozzles on the end, but I just cut off the maybe one and a half centimeters off the top of the bag and then start piping just small you need to leave enough space in between because they will grow quite quickly. So pipe small blobs. I have to be careful not to get carried away. Sometimes I press too hard and pipe them really big and they all end up joining, joining together. So yes, you can do profiteroles, you can do larger ones as in as shoe buns or um, pipe them long and you can have eclairs. Not even sure if you can see me doing this. Uh, yes. bake them in two goes because I can only fit three trays in my oven and then before you put them in the oven have a little cup of water ready so to stop them getting too crunchy on top you need to dab each one of them just with your finger with a bit of water so I'll start with the one I did first Just a little dab. And you have to watch them when you put them in the oven because different recipes state different times. Um, you'll know how strong your oven is. I've done them loads of times and sometimes they come out paler, sometimes they come out quite dark. It doesn't really matter if you're doing it for, the, for yourself. While we're waiting for the profiteroles to come out of the oven, um, I'm just finishing some grass effect on the cupcakes. So this grass effect nozzle, reasonably soft consistency buttercream that I've colored green. I've colored it with a gel coloring paste rather than liquid one. And um, I'm piping the grass for my football cupcakes. So the way I'm doing it is I'm holding the top of the bag in my left hand, bottom of the bag in my right hand, just enough buttercream that I can hold and then squeeze and lift up, squeeze and lift up and you get the grass effect. Then I'm just going to place some chocolate footballs on top and that will be my football cupcakes. When you do the buttercream for these, for this sort of nozzle, because it's just got some small holes in the end of the nozzle, you really have to be careful to beat the buttercream quite a lot, sift your icing sugar, because if you get even a couple of little lumps, the grass won't really come out properly and the nozzle will clog up and your hand will be absolutely killing. So. I'm just going to place a couple of chocolate footballs on. I'm going to go and check on my profiteroles in the oven. So profiteroles are just out of the oven. You need them to be sort of um, golden, golden brown colour. It says to turn them, the minute they come out of the oven, turn them upside down and um, poke a hole in the bottom so the steam can escape. 
so they don't end up to be um, too flat. So I'll wait for them to cool, prepare my cream for the filling and um, fill them and then serve them with um, the chocolate sauce we made earlier. As you can see you get quite a lot of profiteroles out of that batch. So I'm going to take some, I'm going to visit my aunt tomorrow so I'm going to take some with me to her. And um, you can freeze them just like this as the shells. Um, and then take them out, defrost them and then fill them. I've never really tried freezing them while they're filled because um, I don't really think you can freeze the whipped up cream. So yeah, you can just serve some um, straight away and um, freeze the rest. But out of that batch, there's lots of profiteroles.